Hello everybody, welcome to our reading today of The House on Mango Street. We are picking up on page 43, a rice sandwich. The special kids, the ones who wear keys around their necks, get to eat in the canteen. The canteen, even the name sounds important. And these kids at lunchtime go there because their mothers aren't home or home is too far away to get to. My home isn't far, but it's not close either. And somehow I got it in my head one day to ask my mother to make me a sandwich and write a note to the principal so I could eat in the canteen too. Oh no, she says, pointing the butter knife at me as if I'm starting trouble. No, sir. Next thing you know, everybody will be wanting a bag lunch. I'll be up all night cutting bread into little triangles, this one with mayonnaise, this one with mustard, no pickles on mine, but mustard on one side, please. You kids just like to invent more work for me. But Nanny says she doesn't want to eat at school, ever, because she likes to go home with her best friend, Gloria, who lives across the schoolyard. Gloria's mama has a big color TV and all they do is watch cartoons. Kiki and Carlos, on the other hand, are patrol boys. They don't want to eat at school either. They like to stand out in the cold, especially if it's raining. They think suffering is good for you ever since they saw that movie, 300 Spartans. I'm no Spartan and hold up an anemic, anemic wrist to prove it. I can't even blow up a balloon without getting dizzy. And besides, I know how to make my own lunch. If I ate at school, there'd be less dishes to wash. You would see me less and less and like me better. Every day at noon, my chair would be empty. Where is my favorite daughter, you would cry, and when I came home finally at 3 p.m., you would appreciate me. Okay, okay, my mother says after three days of this. And the following morning, I get to go to school with my mother's letter and a rice sandwich because we don't have lunch meat. Mondays or Fridays, it doesn't matter. Mornings always go by slow, and this day especially. But lunchtime came finally, and I got to get in line with the stay-at-school stay kids. Everything is fine until the nun, who knows all the canteen kids by heart, looks at me and says, you, who sent you here? And since I am shy, I don't say anything. Just hold out my hand with the letter. This is no good, she says, till, till Sister Superior gives the okay. Go upstairs and see her. And so I went. I had to wait for two kids in front of me to get hollered at. One because he did something in class. The other because he didn't. My turn came and I stood in front of the big desk with holy pictures under the glass while the Sister Superior read my letter. It went like this. Dear Sister Superior, please let Esperanza eat in the lunchroom because she lives too far away and she gets tired. As you can see, she is very skinny. I hope to God she does not faint. Thanking you, Mrs. E. Cordero. You don't live far, she says. You live across the boulevard. That's only four blocks, not even. Three, maybe three long blocks away from here. I bet I can see your house from my window. Which one? Come here. Which one is your house? And then she made me stand up on a box of books and point. That one, she said, pointing to a row of ugly three flats, the ones even the raggedy men are ashamed to go into. Yes, I nodded, even though I knew that wasn't my house and started to cry. I always cry when nuns yell at me even if they're not yelling. Then she was sorry and said I could stay, just for today, not tomorrow or the day after, you go home. And I said yes, and could I please have a Kleenex? I had to blow my nose. In the canteen, which was nothing special, lots of boys and girls watched while I cried and ate my sandwich, the bread already greasy and the rice cold. Chanclas. It's me, mama, mama said. I open up and she's there with bags and big boxes, the new clothes, and yes, she's got the socks and a new slip with a little rose on it and a pink and white striped dress. What about the shoes? I forgot. Too late now. I'm tired. Phew. 6.30 already and my little cousin's baptism is over. All day waiting, the door locked, don't open up for nobody, and I don't till Mama gets back and buys everything except the shoes. Now Uncle Nacho is coming in his car and we have to hurry to get to precious blood church quick because that's where the baptism party is in the basement rented for today for dancing and tamales and everyone's kids running all over the place mama dances laughs dances all of a sudden mama is sick 
I fan her hot face with a paper plate. Too many tamales. But Uncle Macho says too many this and tilts his thumb to his lips. Everybody's laughing except me because I'm wearing the new dress, pink and white with stripes and new underclothes and new socks and the old saddle shoes I wear to school, brown and white. The kind I get every September because they last long and they do. My feet scuffed and round and the heels all crooked that look dumb with this dress, so I just sit. Meanwhile, the, that boy who is my cousin by first communion or something asked me to dance and I can't. Just stuff my feet under the metal folding chair, stampede, precious blood, and pick on a wad of brown gum that's stuck beneath the seat. I shake my head no, my feet growing bigger and bigger. Then Uncle Nacho is pulling and pulling my arm, and it doesn't matter how new the dress Mama bought is because my feet are ugly until my uncle, who is a liar, says, you are the prettiest girl here. You will dance. Will you dance? But I believe him, and yes, we are dancing. My Uncle Nacho and me, only I don't want to at first. My feet swell big and heavy like plungers, but I drag them across the linoleum floor, straight center, where Uncle wants to show off the new dance we learned. And Uncle spins me, and my skinny arms bend the way he taught me, and my mother watches, and my little cousins watch, and the boy who is my cousin by First Communion watches, and everyone says, wow, who are those two who dance like it, like in the movies? Until I forget that I'm wearing only ordinary shoes, brown and white, the kind my mother buys each year for school. And all I hear is the clapping when the music stops. My uncle and me bow and he walks me back to in my thick shoes to my mother who is proud to be my mother. All night, the boy who is a man watches me dance. He watched me dance.